and Sanctuary Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, yes, this is May. It's a glorious month. There's a lot going on. Uh, so we'll be uh, expeditious. Um, and uh, Ken, would you lead us with a uh, Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, the minutes for April was posted um, and available for everybody's review. Um, I just want to say thank you for uh, the, the lady that uh, has uh, the honor of continuing the tradition of Veterans Memorial Island Sanctuary, Amelie, for covering while I was away at my daughter's birthday in the land of the sailors in Annapolis. Ma'am, thank you. <laughs> so um, any recommended changes, additions, deletions to the April uh, minutes from uh, last month? Um, hearing none, can I get a motion that they be approved? So moved. So, second. Okay. All in favor of uh, them, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. And so they will be filed for record. Uh, next, uh, audience participation. Um, we've asked uh, Colonel Sam Coons to come this morning. He is in charge of the Memorial uh, Memorial Day celebrations for the Veterans Council. So, uh, Sam, if you would come up here to the credenza podium, one of those names, and um, just kind of give us a an overview, I'd appreciate it. I brought some copies of that program. I'm just, did I leave them there, Colonel Coons? Is there no. copies of the program there? No. Excuse me for interrupting your. John Michael oh, has uh, copies of the program that That's has. the old one there. Let me see. That his wife has so graciously worked hard on. Uh, and even the sporting guy, we're having to. Pull the mic a little bit closer, Sam. Here we go. Okay. Is there a button or anything? Is there a button? Can you hear me there now? There you go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. much better. Now we got it. So, John Michael, why don't you pass those programs down to, okay. the, to the council, Here if you would, some, please. Uh, um, his wife, Carla, has done that for us, as she does every year. And it's been a, an effort between, between Tony and I and uh, Gwen Marie St. Vincent to put, to put this uh, program together. I'm sure you've all been a uh, Memorial Day on the island. and. Uh, this one's uh, going to be pretty much the same. Uh, we, it's, it's special for two reasons. Um, as you know, it's the 50th anniversary of the Veterans Memorial Island Sanctuary. And we are going to finish up with a short uh, recognition of that with cake and a song and a nice address, if you will, by <laughs> Alba Lee. Thank you. But uh, to start out, uh, the uh, Memorial Day will be a little different from the perspective of we won't uh, have a, an exit with all the colors going out at the end. We'll, we'll end with the recognition of your anniversary. But we will start with a procession of color guards headed up by the Fife and Drum Corps of the Masters Academy in their period uh, uniforms. And behind them, we have anywhere from 10 to 12 to 15 color guards uh, representing uh, all the services, uh, marching on and then assembling over to the uh, west of the stand as uh, where the colors usually stand. And then um, I want to quickly say we're going to have all the formal military uh, honors and so forth, all the uh, the National Anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, the Invocation of Benediction, and, and the recognition of uh, all the military honors that we usually do. Something else uh, will be special about this. Uh, uh, we're going to have on the stage, uh, the reviewing stand, the stage, whatever you want to call it, a representative of 
each of our services, <clears throat> Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. We will have a representative of the Merchant Marine playing, uh, what's that uh, musician PC plays? The, the bagpipes. Uh, bagpipes. There you go. So we're going to have a representative of all six services uh, there. Also, we'll have on the stage a representative of all the conflicts after World War I. And we're a little heavy right now on World War II. We have three representatives from World War II at this point. And then uh, Vietnam, one or two. Uh, Curtis will be representing the uh, Operation Desert Storm. Uh, Thank you. We're going to have a captain from, uh, had his head from West Point who has had two tours in Iraq. And we uh, hopefully we'll have a Marine uh, enlisted man that has just now returned from Afghanistan. And uh, Marty will, Marty uh, Zickard, our president, I believe, is going to introduce those for us. Uh, I had an email this morning that he, he might not want to, but I'm trying to talk him into it. I think he will. He's, his wife has been very ill, as you know, and he doesn't want... He said he'd like to just stay out in the audience with his wife rather than sitting on a stand. <laughs> so maybe we could work out both, both of those. <laughs> so after that, you could go right down the program, and you could see that uh, it pretty much is the same as it has been uh, years uh, for years and years. Um, we've been planning it for a couple months now, Tony, myself, and uh, Lindbury, St. Vincent. Couple of things different. Uh, at the end, we're going to say have the same rifle volley from the VFW Post 3918. This time, we're going to have a live bugler uh, to play uh, the different military bugle calls. I believe he'll he will perform about four times and end up with taps. So that's basically it. Uh, I'd be happy to respond to any questions anyone has. You want to put the start time out, being there's a lot of people watching this. What time we're starting? What time we were to arrive at the island? Well, that's uh, you should rule, you should arrive as early as possible. We, I've heard the number two thousand uh, expected, uh, and also you should bring chairs. Everybody should bring a chair. Eight fifty is the time you see uh, we're going to assemble and start the march on, and uh, then we'll just go right down the program and end up with Alma Lee and. Uh, Got to get the cake, and that'll be it. And Tony's going to come up on the stage and handle your part from his normal position. If he does a good job up to that point, I'll, I'll call him up. But if, he does, if he messes up the ceremony, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I, I, I'm under uh, review the first half of the ceremony. That's right. Um, so uh, I believe if we march at the command uh, to step off is at 8.50, it wouldn't be. A, uh, it would probably be good for folks to be there by 8:30. I would imagine, with all of the traffic coming into the island, yeah. um, there, there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, movement there. And um, Sam, what, what's available for those that need assistance to get onto the island? What, what we have? Well, we have one of our two buses. We have two 25 passenger buses that transport veterans to West Palm Bay, as you know, to the hospital. We'll have one of those in the area uh, over near the bridge to help anybody coming in up to the entrance to the island. And then we'll have uh, three several passenger golf carts to help people <coughs> from that point on down. Of course, with people walking across the causeway, those golf carts are a little bit slow to get through and back. But we're going to help as many people as we can. And then the police have um, said that they would uh, make sure that they're available to assist in regards to uh, we'll have some um, parking for some of the folks out front uh, designated uh, right. that will be up on the reviewing stand. But uh, anybody that's come uh, previously knows that parking, um, you can um, uh, you can uh, they can fill up very quickly, so come early and make sure you bring a chair and and uh, it'll be a good occasion. I, I'm firmly believe that. Other questions? 
Ken, anything? Questions? I'm okay right now. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for inviting me. See you soon. <clears throat> the program is an almost final draft. Uh, if anybody sees any typos or any spelling or anyone that we, I guess, at least check your own name, see if we've got it right. And, uh, Inevitably, you look at this so many times that you, you, the, the trees get lost in the forest. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, John <laughs> and all of us, mm -hmm. if we see a need for a change, please, uh, please let us know, uh, John and, and, and Sam or I. Yeah. So, very good. And um, I expect that we'll be done by 10, 15 at the latest, not, you know, we don't want it to go long because we know Florida in, in, in May, uh, the longer you're on the island, the higher the temperature goes. Uh, there'll be water that's going to be provided. Um, uh, we met with Rob and the recreation crew. Any any points there, Rob, that come up to, since we met? Okay, e EMS will be available. So uh, here we go. Thanks. Hey, thank you all. Thanks. I guess some might want to go to Sebastian even if it would be a, kind of a quick trip if you got there. Got in the car at 10.15 and made it to Sebastian by 11, I think their ceremony is. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Frank Jensik, please. Good morning, committee. Good morning. Good morning, morning Frank. I bet you have a copy of this, I guess. And I think Tony suggested that I just give you an idea of what my thoughts were on uh, use of the island for uh, our our little um, we got meeting. Uh, I'm doing a reunion of our of our unit from Vietnam, Second Sixteenth Infantry Rangers, Delta Company, and um, we've done this for 24 years. And I, I wanted to have it done in my town, Vero. Of course, very proud of our town, and wanted uh, everybody to. To see it, and um, we're doing a small uh, two and a half, three day event. Many are coming in for many days before, but what I wanted to have on Saturday morning, prior to uh, us moving to the the Bethel Creek House, was just a memorial service on the island to remember those that didn't come back home with us. We had uh, a pretty high casualty rate. And we, we lost a lot of killed in action. And since then, we've had a, an attrition. Uh, we've lost a lot of people in the company over, over the years, especially lately. And um, so what I thought we should do, and I thought we've been a little bit remiss, we've had a toast, but we really haven't had a chance to read the names off. And that's what I particularly wanted to do, was to read the names because really the, the country never really remembered them uh, and nobody's read the names and I think we, we've been a little remiss in not remembering each one specifically. So my thought was to uh, read the names and Chaplain Fleck has, has uh, agreed very uh, generously to come over and spend his morning and, and offer a prayer. And then we were going to have a, a young man from the high school who's excellent on the trumpet to come over and play taps. And short, short, it'll take about 10, 12, 15 minutes to read the names off. And then I, I you know, I don't think the ceremony will run very much longer than 20, 25 minutes. So that's the synopsis of basically what I envision, you know, for Saturday morning. Uh, does anybody have any questions or any questions about the unit, 2nd, 16th Infantry um, Rangers? Are you having the ceremony by the Vietnam Memorial? or? It's a very good question. I went over yesterday to, uh, to try to decide. I thought, I thought perhaps <coughs> doing it by the, uh, the memorial itself for Vietnam would be a good idea. And then I started thinking uh, some of those that are going to try to make it are on oxygen, and they, they really can't stand for too long. And then I thought about moving it down to the, the seats. And then I started thinking about the sun. And we were talking about how warm it gets in May. Well, this is, you know, the third week in June. 
and that sun is as hot as it's going to be. That's the, uh, you know. So I'm, I'm really not sure about which way to do it. And uh, maybe you guys, you, does the committee have a suggestion? You know, the uh, POW MIA monument is, has quite a bit of shade. And if somebody that was in wheelchair could just stay there by the flagpole and still see across to it. And, and it is, of course, appropriate for the... Well, that's a good so, thought. So forth, and they can still see the Vietnam without going all the way down to the circle, which is in the sun, isn't it? But just a thought, Mike. Yeah, I'm wondering about them standing for 25 minutes, too. Yes, uh, of course, they're going to have to stand. I, th I think it's proper to have them stand while the names are, are read, and that's going to take the, the majority of the ceremony and, of course, the prayer. There are a few uh, benches as you're approaching the flagpole. There's two, but, but yeah. Kind of it looks like it accommodate about... Well, maybe about eight people on the benches, and that's a good suggestion for somebody that's having trouble standing. I, I when I th started doing this, I thought maybe tw uh, 35 would make it, and I, I think we've got 35 now, and usually <laughs> most of them decide in the last, mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, our unit, it's the last. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty normal. <laughs> is it normal? Okay. It was just yeah. us, you know, so. <laughs> They make a decision, and it makes it tough when you're doing an event. And like I said to Tony, I, you know, before I thought an event planner, I, what kind of a job is that? Now I'm thinking it's. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it for a living if I had to, to go back and do it. I'll tell you, the details and trying to make everything work, it's not that easy. So that's my thought, and I, I, I think uh, I originally thought about having it by the, the – uh, the Veterans of Vietnam Memorial, the, the, the memorial for the Vietnam War, and I still am leaning in that direction. And it, and it may it may come down to, I may want to move it down to the seats depending on, you know, the weather that day. So. Um, the, the other option would be to encourage folks to bring lawn chairs and, 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 yeah. and you could... It, you these could, these you, people, Tony, some are coming from Hawaii. So well, I'm I, flying I, I, here with, you know, <laughs> but, they'll but be mean, here so, with the minimum. You know, but, I mean, especially and, with the and, rules and then, now with the airlines. And then have some you know? extras available yeah. as well. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, it's a thought, but I, uh, I, I don't know logistically if, you know, how many can, how right. we can handle that. But that, I'm going to suggest to them if uh, they're going to be here and going to the beach, they bring, you know, something that they can use for the ceremony also. Right. And if so, if you have a, I mean, if you have a cart, you know, you could put several on a cart and wheel it across. What do you mean cart? Like a wagon, and put, you know. Oh, okay. Or you know, um, so, but the other option is just to take advantage of the benches that are already there in the shade. Um, but that again, it's it's something that you just need to war game as you get closer in, probably. Yeah, I you know I was kind of I was looking at the memorial and I was hoping that there was something like a dais there, uh, you know, for reading the names and uh, and our, our county fathers have uh, generously uh, going to issue a proclamation to be read also. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll try to bring some sort of a portable you know, stand or something to, to assist uh, even Chaplain Fleck. I don't know what he has in mind, but, okay. um, well, you know, I, the fine-tuning of this, I'm, you know, I'm going to work out. Uh, right. But I, I, don't, I don't expect it to be very, very long in view of the heat, et cetera. But um, the, um, the island has about, I think there's 18 Vietnam um, veterans that are honored with cenotaphs on the island, so as you speak with the men there, um, all of the all of the stones in the center of the island that are just etched into the stones that was the tradition for the Vietnam War. So as you look through them, um, you'll see you'll see all of those names there. Um, and then the other part that you could uh, remind them is that the um, the vision to honor those that had given their lives was um, from the very beginning with Alex McWilliam. So, I mean, that's exactly what the island is is there for. So, I did. Yeah, I didn't know that the the etchings on the stone, the, right. what that denoted. Right. So. You know. So that's that's. I'll share that. I appreciate that.
Is this um, this is just one company of Rangers? You're able to. It's just it's just yeah. Delta Company, and oh. we've done this very informally, and uh, it's not a it's not a big organization, but it's funny we. It's seat of the pants, but it's sort of been copied now by a lot of a lot of other a lot of other units, and it's uh, it's usually been pretty well attended for the number of people that are still left, and they come a long ways. And this, it's, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, this is televised. Would you mind telling us a little bit about where where you served in Vietnam sure. and, and and what type of uh, yeah. operations your unit? Uh, yeah, I. The uh, unit came in country. The, the first entry division, which this is, this unit is a particular part of, mm -hmm. came in country in in '65 and served till 1970. The casualties the division suffered was over 6,000 uh, killed in action. During World War II, the division uh, suffered about 3,600 killed in action. So you can see. You know, the, the violent uh, experience of the 1st Division in Vietnam. The 2nd 16 Infantry Rangers arrived in 1967 and then served until 1970 when they left. I served there, uh, I served in Vietnam as an infantryman in 68-69 uh, at the height of the, of the, of the uh, conflict. Um, the unit served from north of Saigon in the Xi'an area up to the uh, Cambodian border uh, and uh, up to Lok Nin, uh, two very uh, uh, violent battles up in Lok Nin, uh, especially uh, in, and basically uh, participated in everything else. Over at Ben Cat, the operations over at Ben Cat, I was telling Tony about going down in a helicopter over there and because uh, he he uh, shared with me the fact we're both pilots I fly the right kind of airplanes he flies the, the wrong <laughs> kind but I went down in a in a uh, helicopter over in Ben Cat which was a, a pretty pretty uh, pretty remarkable operation over there in a lot of different ways but the, that was the experience and that was the area of operations that that they uh, they took part of, and uh, right after Tet, uh, when I came to the unit, it was uh, after Tet, and it was pretty lean. And uh, when I got there, there wasn't a whole lot of people, and people were asking me what they were going to do. I said, what did you do yesterday? <laughs> you know, that's what you're going to do today. Or really, <laughs> Then we got replacements, and we got, uh, you know... Uh,